Welcome back to J111 Feature Writing. Today we're going to talk about writing the story. Um, in reality, you can only learn writing by writing. However, we will look at various techniques and formats that can be used when writing a feature. So just a review, if you remember, um, in the first class, we said that there is no fixed format for a feature article. And um, we can simply say that it is somewhere between a news format or an inverted pyramid and a literary structure or the rising climax format. Um, so it moves nearer one or the other depending on the medium that we are writing for um, and also the type of feature article. So for example, we're writing a news feature, um, especially if it's a political news feature, then of course it's more similar in format to a news story than a literary form. So again, this is something that's very flexible and is dependent on the subject of the story. So unlike news, a feature has a beginning, a middle or a body, and a conclusion. Also, the feature story, as we discussed earlier, starts with a catchy introduction before it tells you its peg. So if you remember in a previous class, we talked about peg and how important it is to have a peg in your story. So before writing, um, there are certain things that you have to keep in mind and make sure you have everything in front of you. First of all, you have to make sure that you have all your research done. Since a feature is not like a daily beat kind of story, um, it could be that you've taken several days to do several interviews, or you could have been just doing a profile um, article and therefore you had probably tagged along your subject matter for a couple of days. In any case, by the time you write a story, make sure that you don't have any more um, data that you need to gather, everything um, that you need should be within your fingertips. Second, before you even write, um, I suggest you mull about the story. You don't, you know, sit in front of the typewriter or the, I mean your laptop and start typing. Um, a feature story is like um, drinking a glass of wine or even a mug of coffee, you kind of sip it first. You kind of try to taste it first and try to, you know, think about its flavor before finishing it off. So writing a feature takes more time, even in writing. You kind of have to know at the back of your mind, your, your structure, your, your, what is, how should I begin? How will I develop the story and how will I end? So these are the things why um, you may not have the words yet. The ideas should already be there. So first, um, some guide questions. What is the peg? Oops, let's go back. What is the peg? This is something you should already be able to answer prior to even writing the introduction. What is the most important aspect of the story? Because that will tell you what your peg is. And what is the most interesting? Because that will tell you how to draw the readers in. So first, let's look at the introduction. Um, like I said, by the time you're writing introduction, you actually already have an idea of how to develop your story, the body of the story, and how you plan to end it. Of course, as you're writing the body, things may change. But ideally, there's, you already have some idea of how the flow of the story 
um, will go. In feature writing, the lead is still the most important. You know, we this is still journalism. But the lead can be something like a news article that has a simple sentence or the lead could actually be several paragraphs like in a delayed lead the intro of a feature may not may or may not resemble as we said a news lead um, again it depends on the type of feature you are writing so what should the intro do the first thing it should do is set the mood um, in the previous lecture, we talked about tone. The tone sets the mood. By the intro, you've already set the tone. You, the, right, the audience already knows what type of feature or what type of um, approach um, is being adopted. Then early on, you have to establish the five W's and H. Of course, you don't have to write it down like a news article where it's all in one paragraph. Uh, this can be, um, this could either be written together, yes, but it could also be spread out. But it has to be established because this is, after all, a form of journalism and therefore the facts have to be indicated and these are summed up in five W's and H. Although the why and the how, for example, if you you are writing a personal uh, personality profile, then probably the why and the how does not exist. So if there's more than one protagonist, you have to introduce them at the beginning of the feature. So for example, you're doing a, a feature on the entire UP basketball, the men's basketball team then you kind of have to introduce the key players early on. Um, you know, especially the ones, if, if you're only interviewing three um, of the group, then you have to introduce all three early on um, the artic in, in the article. Not necessarily in the first paragraph, but certainly within the first um one-fourth of the article, your reader should already know who they are. Then, of course, the peg is normally written in the form of the not graph. The not graph is the paragraph that stands out. Um, it's not together with other things, but um, it's somewhere near the introduction, near the beginning of the story, which tells your reader what is this article all about? Um, in a feature article, um, sometimes you find that in the third, fourth paragraph. So not necessarily, it is not necessarily a lead, but it does tell you in a succinct uh, way or a very clear way what the story is going to be about. Now, alternative leads, as we have um, discussed or or I hope you know you've taken it up in J102 um, is something that can be adopted in features not necessarily in the same way but there are certainly um, ways of adopting it in a feature that still helps you catch the reader's attention um, so it's still very viable and we'll look at some we will relook at a few here so for example setting the scene or the descriptive lead offers a visual image in words of a person or a place all right um, i suggest as you view this um video you also download this article by Andrea Elliott of the New York Times regarding um, Muslims in Manhattan um, because it illustrates what we mean in the use of the peg and the alternative lead. Um, in this particular article, the author chooses the setting the scene as a delayed lead in the article. 
the young Egyptian professional could pass for any New York bachelor. Dressed in a crisp polo shirt and swathed in cologne, he races his Nissan Maxima through the rain-slick streets of Manhattan, etc., etc. So read through that and see how um, the author used several paragraphs to introduce the article. Another possible way of starting the story is the comparison or contrast lead. So this compares or contrasts two extremes. The extreme should be very clear to the audience, um, such as rich and poor, old and young, um, etc. Um, for example, 15 years ago, three PayPal employees decided to build a website to exchange video clips of a Super Bowl halftime performance. Today, YouTube is owned by Google and gets over 25 million unique visitors to the site each month. So we could see the transition from just the three ordinary employees to this big digital conglomerate. The punch lead. So if you remember the punch lead, it should be blunt, it should be explosive, it should be short, succinct. It should jolt or surprise the reader. For example, yesterday the Manhattan police went and arrested a queen. A 5'9 tall, auburn-haired, Gucci-clad, 35-year-old woman executive, Sonia Trepala is known in the underworld as the queen of 7th Avenue, etc., etc. So there has to be that one liner that serves as the punch and a very good follow up uh, second sentence. Historical allusion is something also very much used in features. It relates a person or event to some character or event in history. Maybe in the Philippines, it's not commonly used because we have a poor understanding of history, but um, it can also be something that, a trend that can we can start. Apart from historical allusion, there's also the literary allusion, um, using famous literary text um, instead of um, a historical event or fact. Um, so that can be um, an alternative to this lead. So for example, MacArthur's late landing seems child, child's play compared with trying to land two tickets to the BTS concert at the Mall of Asia. So here you're comparing a historical event, the late landing, with and the key word and why this works is the word land. And the idiomatic use of landing two tickets. Then, of course, the anecdote lead. This can be used if there are very good, if your source already tells you a really good story. Um, or if you have a good story that illustrates the bigger body of the text. So the use of an event to represent a universal experience. For example, the, the, the experience of Mrs. Cruz is an example of um, the difficulty of getting, a, uh, getting the so-called ayuda during the quarantine period. Uh, so her experience can be used to um, to write the feature about trying to get government or to secure um, the government allotments for um, the unemployed um, citizens. So choose an anecdote lead that has intrin intrinsic worth by choosing one that can stand alone and still be interesting. The anecdote should strike the right chord for the feature and create the right emotion. So do you want the readers to feel empathy? Do you want them to feel angry? Do you want them to feel sad? So the anecdote should draw them into that emotion. So for example, by all accounts, Brendan's fear was a healthy newborn. 
but some subtly abnormal behavior made his mother, Jessica Spear, think twice. At, new, at two weeks, he could not turn his head to the right. At two months, he was clearly left-handed, etc., etc. I suggest you look at this story about children who are stroke victims, which is also a, you know, many, my examples are Pulitzer Prize winning features, um, which I think, are the best illustrations for the ideal uh, feature article. Unfortunately, there are very few um, that can be used as comparison of the locally written features, or if ever they're not yet digitized. Then, of course, there are many when you talk about alternative leads, there is a never-ending list. And actually, um, you could even invent some of your own. And so I'll just enumerate a few more. But um, there are just really so many options. Um, so for example, the first person lead, this can be used when you want to share an unforgettable experience or you witness something unusual for which you want or which triggered you to write this particular feature. Um, the direct address lead uses the second person. This is when you want to target an audience with the you, with the use of the you word um, so that those who are affected will read your article. And of course, the quotation lead, which is um, takes off from something that your source had said, but this can only be done or used when your source has something very catchy. Otherwise, it's not meant to be a lead. So unless it's both succinct, it also tells what the story is about and it is catchy. That's the only time um, it becomes usable in your story as a lead. Then we talked about the peg, which is which will be contained in what we, uh, in journalistic jargon, call the knot graph. The knot graph tells the reader what the writer is up to. It delivers a promise of the story's content and message. It is called a knot graph because like a knot, it contains the kernel or essential theme of the story. So you can imagine, um, well, here our squirrel is holding an acorn, um, but he eats what's inside it. In the same way, pag uh, bumili ka ng nilagang mane sa tabi-tabi, kinakain mo yung nasa loob. So that is why we call it a nut graph. So what is its purpose? It justifies the story by telling readers why they should care. It provides a transition from the lead and explains the lead and its connection to the rest of the story. It often tells readers why the story is timely. It often includes supporting material that helps readers see why the story is important. For example, you can go back to Ms. Um, to Andrea Elliott's article, um, the one I told you about earlier. Here, you can see that uh, this is the nut graph, which is written in um, one long paragraph followed by a one sentence paragraph. Christian singles meet for coffee, young Jews have J date. But many Muslims believe that it is forbidden for an unmarried man and woman to meet in private. In predominantly Muslim countries, the job of making introductions and even arranging marriages typically falls to a vast network of family and friends. In Brooklyn, there is Mr. Shatta. All right, so the story goes um, about this imam, this Muslim imam who's based in New York. So a nut graph is a flag to the reader. High up in the story, you can decide to proceed or not. But if you read no farther, you know what the story is about. 
as said by Ken Wells of the, Wa the Wall Street Journal. Okay, now the body. So once you have your introduction, um, you should know where you're going by now, hopefully. So the body is written depending on the type of feature. So even if you're doing a Q&A story, you still have to have an introduction that uh, completes, is, is completed with a nut graph. Perhaps if it's a Q&A, your introduction is not that long, but only a few paragraphs, but it definitely should contain a nut graph. Now, um, for a, for a Q&A type, the Q&A starts right after the nut graph. For any other feature, there could be a transition uh, between the nut graph and the rest of the story. For a personality feature, the first paragraph of the body may still be a transition, as we said, building up to a climax. So you're still talking about, or you're still trying to introduce your character. For a news feature, the structure is still the inverted pyramid, but the first few paragraphs could be used to establish a background. All right. So in other words, there's not one way of writing the body. As we said, um, feature writing is very flexible. So um, what you have to be striving for is that there is a flow between the introduction and the body. So if you have interviewed people, let them reveal themselves through quotes. We talked about this already. The use of quotation helps the readers um, understand the source better. It, also, it can also serve as a break between the introduction and the rest of the body. <coughs> um, so their voices um, will bring your feature story to life. Then, of course, you have to relax. You know, you don't dump all your facts right after the nut graph. Um, this is a feature, not news, and therefore you can tell the story slowly or at least a slower pace than if this was a new story. So the idea is to space out your information so that everything necessary is included without disrupting the narrative flow. So I suggest that what you do um, while you're still trying to learn how to write a feature is after writing the introduction, read it to yourself, then try to put in your body, and then after that, read the introduction and the body and see if they flow. Uh, that will tell you if you are doing it right. Or better yet, read it to somebody else. Read it to your roommate your doormate, your sister, your brother, um, get an audience so that they can tell you whether it flows. And the conclusion. So the conclusion, we don't just end when we have nothing else to say. That is for news. It doesn't work that way for features. So a conclu conclusions, again, there is no fixed way or format in writing a conclusion. Many writers use the one-liner technique, um, sort of like rounding, um, picking out from the lead and then making it a rounded um, line in the end that ties the whole thing. It's like, um, I would say like you, the body would be the package and the beginning and end would be the ribbon. Um, of that package and so that that makes everything connected so that's one way um, of, of ending your story um, some like to use stinger questions especially if you know if the story is something ongoing it, it, it hasn't really ended um, you know the issue is still very much um, being discussed then a possible conclusion could be a stinger sort of question to make your audience think. Um, it could also be a very good quote from the source. Um, that could be like a summary, that could serve as a summary for the entire feature. 
or or to give the audience something to think about or you could end it with a takeaway you know what is what should your audience be you know after reading the story what should they feel what should they resolve should they be moved into action um, what do you want them to get from this story so you could also end that way um, to get them to think about what to do next if you want um, or to um, get involved so it really depends on what you're what you want them to do so whether you want them to watch this film um, you want them to to um, get to know your character or your source better the celebrity better or you want your audience to empath empathize with this um, victim or this um, personality so that's how you can choose to end so as we said there are there is no fixed way of writing a feature but one thing it should have is a flow it should flow <clears throat> it should flow smoothly from beginning to end if you want to look at more examples of good feature writing I suggest you browse um, this site it is the collection of Pulitzer Prize winners in the feature category Okay, I hope also that reading more feature articles, um, whether local or foreign, would also uh, give you some ideas of how to approach your own feature. So this lecture should lead you to uh, your next or your the first paper of this class, feature article number one. Kindly look at the syllabus and the website for the details for this assignment okay um, 